Welcome back to our intermediate financial accounting class. In this segment, we get to talk about one of the most important concepts we will ever discuss, and that is how to use the Accounting Standards Codification, or ASC. Now, the ASC is FASB's database of GAAP. It contains all of the rules that FASB has passed for companies to use in reporting their financial position. It's a much better database than anything FASB has ever put out before. Matter of fact, we used to use a bunch of CDs that had three or four different databases that you would have to search through to try to figure out what the rule was in any given situation. And if FASB hasn't passed the rule, then what has the EITF said, the Emerging Issues Task Force? And if they haven't said anything, then did the AACPA say anything? And if they haven't said anything, or if FASB said something, then I'll go look at the SEC's website and make sure that they haven't reported something separate for me because I'm a publicly traded company. Do you get the picture? It was a really complicated process to try to put together all these different databases that all contained different parts of GAAP. And so, several years ago, FASB put together the codification database that pulled together all of these different rules and ensured that we could see everything in one place. It was a huge time saver to companies. And it's still a big deal for us today. One of the reasons why this is so important is because we use it as teachers to make sure that we're up to date on GAAP. Uh, it's part of the CPA exam to be able to use a simplified version of the database. And you'll use it as auditors to figure out are clients doing this appropriately. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, users of GAP, the companies that are reporting their financial position and creating financial statements, use the ASC anytime something new comes up in their business. So whether we're using it because FASB's passed a new rule and I have to figure out how that rule applies to me, or because I've started a new contract or a new line of business or put together a new situation that I haven't seen before. I'll use the ASC and research the ASC a lot in my work. Matter of fact, I actually just had a professional visit my classes the other day. And as she and I were talking about what she had learned back when she was in college, she mentioned that the work we'd done in the ASC had been extremely helpful to her just in the last few months as her company started a brand new contract offering storage for liquefied CO2 as part of their ESG initiative. This was fascinating scientifically that they'd figured out a way to do this, but from a financial accounting perspective, it was really interesting to hear that that had turned into a formal leasing contract, not a sale of a service, because that's how FASB has defined it in the ASC. So, even professionals who have been doing accounting for years are still using the ASC to figure out the best way to do something now. So with that as an introduction to why the ASC is so important, which by the way, is one of our key concepts, understanding that the ASC has become such a crucial part of how we do accounting. Let's go ahead and jump into a discussion. And we're gonna start here with FASB's website. It used to be that FASB sold access to GAAP as part of the way that it got funding, and it does still do that. You still have to buy a formal subscription to the ASC. But there are quite a few things that you can access that FASB provides for free. And I just want to mention some of those so that you can be comfortable with FASB and what it provides. So uh, there's a lot of information here you can see on FASB's website, but I want to start here in the projects area. FASB is constantly working on creating new GAP. It happens all the time. Uh, it's one of the things that frustrates me a lot. If you're interested in what FASB is doing, you can go to their homepage, fasb.org, hover over projects, and you can see their technical agenda, which is their timeline for creating new GAP. Let's just take a quick look. FASB has actually done a pretty good job of this. Uh, they summarize all of the different projects and show you where they're at in the process. Anything highlighted has been done. Anything that still has this little clock means they haven't started it yet. So you can see that they are starting deliberations on how to account for crypto assets. This is in January of 23, but they haven't gotten any further than that. So they don't have an exposure draft. Exposure draft is their first tentative rule. At the moment, all they've done is start to talk about it. And I should mention, sometimes this process goes really, really fast, and sometimes it's really, really slow. It depends on how pressing 
FASB feels the issue is and also how politically charged it is and how desperate the market is to get an answer. So cryptocurrency is a great example of this. We're just getting started because this is going to be a very, very complex issue. There are so many unknowns that it's probably going to take FASB a long time to set a standard for the profession to use. On the flip side, there's a lot of pressure to come up with good standards. So FASB's kind of caught between wanting to do a really good job and be really thorough and provide a very reliable set of rules and this idea of relevance. I need to get rules out right away while the market is still desperate and needs the help. So we'll see where FASB comes down on this. Looking at this website, you can see where FASB is on their different pieces. And there are lots of projects that FASB is working on right now, but I just want to mention this one. They added it to their agenda, telling everybody that they were going to work on this project. They then went through their initial deliberations and decided what they felt the rule should be and assigned some people to draft a rule. They then took that draft rule, got it all written up formally, and released it to the public. That's the exposure draft. Then they had a comment period where people were able to put in their ideas and thoughts about the new rule and will it work and is it going to do what FASB wants it to do effectively and where the cost is not excessive. So this particular rule is now at the final stage where FASB is deliberating based on what the comments that they got from the exposure draft. And once they decide how they want to tweak the rule based on the comments to the exposure draft, then they will issue the final standard. From here, you can see all of the work that FASB has done. And you can see they've made available very detailed information on what they're doing and why. You can get to the exposure draft and download an actual copy of the proposed update. You can also read the comment letters. Everything that FASB does is public. So you can actually get to what people have sent in. And you can see other information that FASB has provided. There's a lot here from FASB's technical agenda. I'm going to go back a page. Uh, you can see this for any project that FASB is working on. In addition, you can go to standards and you can see right here is the link to the codification. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But you can also click right here and get to the actual standards that FASB has created. So we call them accounting standards updates or ASUs. This is the actual rule that FASB has published. And I just want to click on one of these. We're going to go back to this 2021-7 on compensation and determining the current price of underlying shares. So you can read through the terms and conditions. And of course, you should. I'm going to click accept. And this is what an update looks like. I'm going to scroll through a couple of pages of front matter here. But you will, you will always find in an update a formal summary of why FASB did what it did. Why did it pass this new rule, which can be really helpful if you're trying to figure out if this rule will affect your business is to come read what FASB is trying to get at and that will give you a push to know, yep, FASB wanted to do something that's going to affect my business. In addition, they will explain who's affected and they'll summarize the main issues or provisions of the rule. This is what we're really changing. And then they will talk about the difference between this new rule and the old gap. And you can see this discussion is pretty detailed. They try to make it as easy as possible for people to figure out what is changing. And then the other important piece for any new rule is they will explain when companies have to start using it. Sometimes this is really short, but sometimes they'll give you two or three years when they think that this is going to be a really big process. And often you'll see differences in the implementation period where large companies that are publicly traded and have large accounting departments, they have to do it within a year or so. And smaller or non-publicly traded institutions, which usually don't have all of the accounting support, give them time to see what the bigger companies are doing. And then they can use those methods to implement their own standards. So it really works well uh, for these smaller companies. The final piece of the ASU is the actual new standard. All right, that's probably more detail than we needed on that, but I did want you to be aware. You can get to this for free. You can go and see FASB's full rule, all of it summarized, all of the pieces that they've changed, tweaked, adjusted here on FASB's website. In addition, if you go back to standards, we can click on the accounting standards codification and it will bring us 
to FASB's database, which is kind of cool that FASB is providing this information. It used to be very expensive for everybody to join and get into the ASC. Now, however, it's free for everybody, which is awesome. So all you have to do to get into the database is click here to show that you're not a robot and click on access. And then it will bring up FASB's license agreement. Uh, you're welcome, of course, to read through this like any other license agreement, but essentially it breaks down to this information belongs to FASB, not to us. So I'm just gonna scroll down to the bottom since I have looked at this many times in the past and click accept. And when I do that, I now have access to all of GAP. So what you'll notice right here off to the side are the categories that FASB has used to break down all of GAP into manageable pieces. And what I would invite you to do is take a look at these, play around with them just a little bit. When we come back in our next segment, we'll start talking about what they mean, what they contain, and how to use the database. We'll see you then. Thanks.